Okay, so let's talk about what happens when you have two functions that are multiplied together or two functions that are divided. So in all the examples we've done so far, we've just used addition, subtraction, and constant multiples. So we want to sort of come up with some ideas of what to do if we have multiplication of two things or division of two things. And so if we start with this example, f of x equals x plus 4 times 2x minus 5, we could find this derivative by distributing. So 2x squared plus 8x minus 5x makes plus 3x minus 20. And then using the power rule and taking the derivative of that way. So 4x plus 3. But if we didn't want to go through that, we have something called the product rule, which would allow us to do this derivative without doing that multiplication first. And so when you think about the product rule, you want to think about the fact that derivative will only work on one function at a time. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the derivative of the first function and just leave the second function alone. Plus, and then we're going to just not touch the first function and multiply by the derivative of the second function. So this is the product rule. This is something you want to memorize. You're going to use it often, often, often. So get it set. Okay, so over here, if I make this first function f and this second function g, then if I'm going to use the product rule, I know it needs to know what's the derivative of f and what's the derivative of g. So in this first function f, the derivative of x plus 4 is just 1. In the second function g, the derivative of 2x minus 5 is just 2. So if I do the product rule on that function, I would get f prime, which is 1, times g, 2x minus 5, plus f x plus 4 times g prime, which was 2. So that's going to uh, distribute that out, combine like terms, and I end up with 4x plus 3, which is exactly the same derivative I got when I didn't use the product rule. So we kind of know that the rule works and that we can use it, um, we can use it or we can try to distribute and multiply out. Sometimes it's going to be tedious and sometimes you're going to get to examples where you can't even multiply out, maybe if we have exponentials or something involved. Okay, so let's try again. This one says find the derivative of the following. So in this case, again, I have two functions multiplied together. I'm going to call the first function f and the second function g. Off to the side, I'm going to write down what the derivative of each of those functions is. So the derivative of f is going to be 6x plus 2. The derivative of g is going to be 1. And then I'm going to use that product rule. Remember, it says f prime g plus f g prime. And so in my product rule, the derivative of f, f prime, is 6x plus 2 times x minus 1 plus 3x squared plus 2x minus 3 times 1. And if you want to, you can distribute this out, um, combine like terms, but you don't have to. You don't have to do any simplifying. So this is a perfectly acceptable answer. Okay, let's try again. So here's another one where I have two functions multiplied together. So my first function f is 2x to the negative 3 plus 4x plus pi. My second function g is 4x plus 1. Off to the side, I'm going to write down f prime and g prime again. So the derivative of 4x plus 1 is 4. The derivative of 2x to the negative 3, be careful because that's a negative, I'm going to get negative 6x to the negative 4, and then plus the derivative of 4x is going to be 4. Okay, so let's write down that product rule again, f prime g plus fg prime, and plug in the pieces I know, f prime, negative 6x to the negative 4 plus 4 times g, 4x plus 1, plus f 2x to the negative 3 plus 4x plus pi times g prime, which is 4. And again, you don't have to do any simplifying. You can leave it just like that. Okay, so here's another function. And I have square root of x times 3x squared minus 3. So square root of x is not something that I can just use the product, the power rule on without uh, rewriting. So I'm going to rewrite this as x to the 1 half, 3x squared minus 3. And again, you don't need to use the product rule on this. You could just distribute and then find the derivative using the power rule. But just for the sake of practice, we're going to try to use the, the product rule. So here's my f, here's my g. Over on the side, write down what your f prime and your g prime are. So g prime is 6x, f prime 
is 1 half x to the negative 1 half. So when I find the derivative of this function, I use that product rule. Remember it says f prime g plus f g prime. And I get something that looks like 1 half x to the negative 1 half times g, 3x squared minus 3, plus f x to the 1 half times g prime 6x. So this one asks us to go a little farther because it wants us to find f prime of 4. So after I find the derivative, then I'm going to plug in 4. Remember, you can't plug in the number until after you find the derivative. So 1 half times 4 to the negative 1 half, 3 times 4 squared minus 3, plus 4 to the 1 half times 6 times 4. And go ahead and plug that into your calculator. And when you plug that into your calculator, you should get a number like 237 over 4. Okay, so that's what we do when two functions are multiplied together. Let's talk about what happens when I have division or a quotient, okay? So the quotient rule is a lot like the product rule, except it has subtraction instead of um, addition. And again, it can only work on one function at a time. So bottom, times the derivative of the top. When I say it, I'm thinking about these things. Minus top f of x times the derivative of the bottom. And we started with a quotient, so we want to end with a quotient. Something like g of x squared, okay? So this is the quotient rule. Again, another rule that you want to try to memorize. Let's try to apply it to this function over here. So my top function f is going to be x minus 5. My bottom function g is going to be 2x plus 1. Off on the side, I'm going to write down what f prime and g prime are. So the derivative of f is 1, the derivative of g is 2, and then I'm going to apply the, product, the quotient rule. So in, the, in my head, I'm doing bottom times the derivative of the top minus top times the derivative of the bottom divided by the bottom squared, right? But however you need to memorize it, that's what you do. Okay, so the derivative of this thing is going to be g f prime minus f g prime over g squared. So g, 2x plus 1, times f prime 1, minus f, x minus 5, times g prime 2, over 2x plus 1 squared. Again, you do not need to do any simplifying. It's perfectly fine to leave your answer just like that. Okay, let's look at these two functions. And I want you to notice that they are using the same two pieces, right? They're both using 3x plus 1 and 2x squared. In one case, I can simplify before I take the derivative. And in another case, I can't. So if I'm looking at this function on the left, what I can do is take some time to rewrite this function as 3x over 2x squared plus 1 over 2x squared. So that would be 3 halves x to the negative 1 plus 1 half x to the negative 2. I can't do that with this function on the right because the denominator has a whole bunch of pieces to it. And the reason this is better on the left-hand side is because now I can just use the power rule. So to find the derivative of this, I can just do negative 3 halves x to the negative 2 minus 2 times 1 half x to the negative 3. And I don't need to use the quotient rule to find this derivative. Again, if you want to, you can do some simplifying. This would be negative 3 over 2x squared minus 2 and, two and 1 half cancel out, 1 over x cubed. But you don't have to. But this second function on the right, I have to use the quotient rule because I can't break it up when there's that whole bunch of stuff down there. So over on the side, I'm going to write down f prime and g prime. So 4x and 3, and I use that quotient rule, bottom times the derivative of the top minus top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. So let's plug in the pieces we know. y prime is bottom 3x plus 1 times the derivative of the top 4x minus top 2x squared times the derivative of the bottom 3 over 3x plus 1 all squared. Again, if you want to, you can multiply through, combine like terms, do some simplifying, but it's completely not necessary.